Well, MVP. Like, straight up. Oh? Uh, I posted okay. it on Twitter. It's on the social medias. You, you know, haven't it's even out seen there. two of the teams play. You're correct, Josh, <laughs> but I don't care. So uh, <laughs> okay. I, I'm voting for him so far. He's got my vote. Now, I could change it at a later date, as I often do. Yes, but uh, true. for now, this guy, his performance is utterly unreal. I, I, I would agree with that, though. I mean, I, you got to highlight that one particular play where he forced by himself, forcing everyone with that Primer Rage inside of the steps uh, and of course you got to talk about leaves in incredible now nah, uh, just talk about like Gushway. but yes but yes <laughs> Gushway though I, just like the way that he was putting players in in positions that they they simply were just not expecting and then his team was playing into that as well which i think was just so awesome to see this squad so coordinated well really we talk about the main tanks so often leading the charge for these teams and i think it was quite obvious that Gushway had finland's number and fraggy just couldn't keep up with the momentum and so when you, you, you go for these dive compositions linkser can frag out davin maybe can frag out didn't really prove it but G china were just so much better and it really showed in these compositions specifically that finland were outmatched and didn't deserve to win this matchup and china rightfully will be in the semifinals. And real quick, I just want to know, you're talking about compositions. Look this. at Finland's wow, composition. This, this Look was at this. such a, this was filthy. Was this was filthy. I had to bathe <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> anyway, but look at Finland's composition there. It was so weird. They didn't go in with a tank that was yes, like needy, no like Reinhardt or, or uh, Winston. And what's so strange is China are playing a style that's very chaotic and they thrive in it and they have so much experience with it. That's the kind of practice that they talk about putting in. Finland, we assumed, had a huge amount of experience playing a very disciplined triple tank, triple support. Where was it? Yeah. Yeah. it? It seemed like they fed into China's playstyle where things were chaotic. At some point, they didn't have a main tank. They were just kind of all over the place and making more mistakes than their opponent. I felt like I was hoping for an adaptation at the half where they yeah. could go back to their playstyle, and instead, they continued to play via China's music. <laughs> did I, did yeah. I take your point, Johnny? Yeah. Well, almost, yes. But okay. realistically, this was also what their map picks as well. They picked Hollywood, they picked Hanamura, yeah. and so they didn't yeah. go for the King's Row or you the You played Boscaya. yourself. I, I played... Not really, no. DJ Khaled. <laughs> I didn't play anything. Mm, so wrong I event. Just, I'm just here. Wrong event. Okay, Absolutely. well, Josh, I understand, though, you also want to break down some things as well, because Unfortunately for Finland, one of the one of the themes was small mistakes. Yeah, and they were really, really struggling. Yes, absolutely. Both of these two teams, I think, were actually fairly even in how they were playing a lot of the time. But China were being able to force Finland to make tiny errors and force them into difficult positions where they did make tiny errors. Now, this one is, is so small that it's just incredible to watch the little pieces that all come to make it happen. So I'm going to go into a Telestrator and kind of illustrate what was happening on the final defense for Finland. So if you start by taking a look up here at the timer, they've only got 15 seconds left, China. They really have to push. Finland should have the advantage. I mean, look at this. So much time on the clock. Four minutes compared to 15 seconds seconds but team china as we know ended up capping all of the points so china were able to enter and after just kind of uh, gathering a lot of space and being able to pressure finland back it comes down to the ultimates that are coming online so they're looking to get sky's nano boost available and pair it with tr uh, crystal's blade and that nano blade will be able to tear through finland it's a race to the nano boost though because Bi big goose was at 93 percent so as we're watching these two teams we were wondering what was going to happen with it now as you can see the fight on the point happened and Fraggy gets isolated a little bit. So I just want to pause again here, take a look at Fraggy's health. He's so weak, but what is this, this disastrous is situation that's happened up at the top here? Is that uh, uh, when Bing Big Goose tries to use the Nano Boost, he's actually won the battle and got there ever so slightly faster than Sky, but the Nano Boost gets missed onto Fraggy, which he could have used to shut down this Nano Blade that's about to come in, and instead everything falls to pieces. Crystal's able to mop up with the Nano Boost. And so you can see here from Big Goose's point of view, He's got Shaz just right in front of him. He, oh. tries, he tries to nano boost Fraggy, and it's just too <laughs> little, to too it. late. And it's these tiny little mistakes and all of these moving pieces that makes Overwatch such a strategic game and a messy style like China just knocks people off their game. There's so many moving parts that if you're not playing super disciplined and you're used to it, things fly all over the place very quickly. The boostio, the boostiata. The Pusiata, yeah, yeah, that's, it, that's it, pretty you know, good. Like yeah. it, it, you know, you, you hate to see it, kids. Um, well, I mean, yeah, and I think that illustrates it perfectly. And, and then from there, everything kind of just, everything kind of just fell apart for yeah. them, right? Well, really, you're you're Finland and you're down 2-0, and you were supposed 
maybe not the favorites in everyone's minds, but still, mm -hmm. Finland coming into this matchup were very confident, and so I feel like you're down 2-0, and you go into round two. Oh, boy. Just let it live. Uh, just let it live, baby. How, how it goes. Just, just let it Sometimes you just be like that. The, hat, the, the hat does what it wants, <laughs> Chief. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and so maybe maybe Finland just lost it for a little bit, and they just weren't as confident as they become yeah. a bit stressed. I'm I just think that hat segment. lost it. Yeah. I think that yeah. hat lost it as well. Okay, well, <laughs> that game was crazy. Analysis, by the way. And yeah, <laughs> top tier analysis, by the way. Just throwing it out there. Uh, but we want to find out what you think. We want your analysis. We want to see how you felt about that match. We have two incredible people to let us know. We got Puckett and Zoe on the floor with our T-Mobile Fan Pulse. What's going on? That's right, guys. We got our finger on the T-Mobile Fan Pulse, brought to you by T-Mobile, America's fastest unlimited network. It's Puckett, you know Zoe, and we've been keeping up with everybody online. We have. So thanks, everyone, for getting involved and joining the Overwatch World Cup conversation over on Twitter. Let's take a look at what we have during this Fan Pulse for A lot of love for China here today, and a lot of surprises. Gushwa's primal rages are so methodical, it's nuts how he ults whenever he wants and does whatever and gets out for free. Setting up a lot of those diva bombs as well. Yeah, I mean, he already made a name for himself during the group stage, and he continues to do so here on the big stage. It's Erica Wright. I love Team China's style of playing. It reminds me of a normal comp game. Very chaotic, but very organized. All right. <laughs> They're like a death ball just running through Finland. I want to see how Finland is going to counter this on their attack. Well, <laughs> Uh, spoiler alert, it did it not. It didn't work, Erica. <laughs> that didn't quite work out. Yeah, not so much. And of course, we had Sam Jarvis chiming in. Team Finland played Symmetra. Yes, they got 0 3 Couldn't we make some noise, though, for Linkser running Symmetra tonight? Absolutely. Yes. And that wasn't just a kind of chunk kind of Symmetra. That's absolutely legit on point A on Hanamura. And Don't I'm use her in plat, it. guys. Don't use her in plat. Yeah, I'm, we're not I'm encouraging you. Yeah. <laughs> That's really not what's happening. Anyway, you too should be getting involved in those fan pulses sponsored by T Mobile. And all you have to do is head on over to Twitter using the hashtag OWWC2018. We might be reading your tweet next. Guys, we've had three incredible matches. Have you enjoyed the show so far, BlizzCon? Yes! We've got one more quarterfinal, and when we return, it's a big one. It's Costa and Team Australia taking on the two-time world champs, South Korea. They don't just play for a team. They play for every fan, every rival, every moment, every match. And when everyone watching expects the best, they perform with the best.
Welcome back, everyone, to the desk here as we get ready for our last matchup of the day. It's going to be Australia going up against South Korea. That was my best impression. <laughs> Mitch, will, Mitch will be proud. Uh, so he's not. This is <laughs> this is going to be uh, quite quite the matchup because we we don't know what to expect at this point in time. We have an and, idea. And no, I I don't. <laughs> I I honestly do not, man. I thought. USA would be moving on. That's true. I that thought Finland true. would be moving on. And to be 100% frank with you, I thought that France would be moving on. So I th Curse. I don't know. There's a reason maybe you're hosting. You. Yeah, maybe you should be wearing the hat. Oh, no, but I'm not an analyst, though. <laughs> no. No. Coming out. John. Right. There you go. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. Hey, you know what? I'd rock this hat if it had T-Mobile oh, and too, it was magenta. Yeah. You're too pretty. Just throwing it out there. Yeah. <laughs> you're too pretty. I know. And also, you don't want to mess up my hair. So, <laughs> gentlemen, <laughs> this is going to be a good one. We're going to break it all down. But for now, I'm going to send it over to Danny, who's actually got Flower Vin of Team South Korea. Australia. Can the South Koreans continue on their winning streak or will Team Australia put a stop to them? But for now, we have our beautiful Miss Flowervin standing right next to me. Flowervin, welcome to BlizzCon. One question, how does it feel to be the community lead of such a great team? 자, 일단 BlizzCon에 오신 플라, 어, 꽃빛님 너무나도 어, 영광이고 너무나도 감사합니다. 여기까지 오시게 오셔서 어, 그리고 이제 홍보대사로 지금 한국 팀이랑 같이 오시게 되는데 그것에 대한 소감 한 말씀 부탁드릴게요. Uh, hi, I'm Flavi. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> 네, 안녕하세요. 아, 진짜 무대가 너무 멋지네요. 진짜 이런 큰 무대 초대해 주셔서 저를 초대해 주셔서 정말 너무 감사드립니다. 그리고 이 환상적인 무대에서 우리 선수분들을 정말 응원을 할수 있다는 게 너무 행복해요. 어, 그리고 제가 대한민국에 오버워치 국가대표 월드컵 위원회라는 게 정말로 자랑스럽습니다. 대한민국 화이팅! Thank you. Alrighty, so quick translations. Uh, thank you guys so much for having me here. It's a great feeling to be standing right in front of you, join, um, having fun with all of you guys, all of you Overwatch fans. And it's truly an amazing, amazing stage. And thank you guys for the invite. And it's a great honor to be coming to BlizzCon with the Korean team. Alrighty, Flowerbin, thank you so much. Everybody, make some noise for Flowerbin. Everybody, since I'm here and the players are about to go ahead and play the game, and I'm right here with our wonderful, beautiful Korean fans. Guys, should we uh, should we cheer on our players? Yeah. 자 한국 분들 한번 다 같이 함성을 지르면서 어, 선수들을 한번 응원하도록 하겠습니다. 자, here we go, guys. Three, two, one. South Korean fans, make some noise. That is it for me, everybody. Back to you guys at the desk. I tell you, man, that Danny, natural hype guy. I love it. He's, he's you know, he's got, he's got, he's got a long career ahead of him uh, as a hype man for sure. Hit up DJ Khaled. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, I had to bring it back somehow. All right, everyone, welcome back to the desk. And if you thought that it was ridiculous before, it's gonna get even more ridiculous now because we're joined by one Uber or Mitch Uber Leslie. Uber Mitch. Uber. Uber Mitch Leslie. How you going? Hi, how you doing, buddy? Good. Uh, look, I've been you know thinking on this for quite a while, and I feel like you know today's the kind of day where we're going to see incredible games and also some big surprises, and I brewed a fine vintage. Why is there a shoe on my desk? This one here, 1991 vintage. Brent, get a whiff of that. We're gonna. This is, no. this is how. This is how we're gonna celebrate. Oh, it smells random. The sun yeah. and the cross rising yeah, up. I, I'm excited. I've been preparing it. Wow. Look, it's ready to go. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be great. I can't wait to crack it when the Aussies win. This is my desk, and there's a shoe on 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 my desk. Uh, you know, everything's just gone off. I just, <laughs> please, Josh. <laughs> yeah. Champions of the World Cup, the greatest nation to ever produce esports athletes, the overwhelming favorites for every World Cup they've ever been in. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, where's the team I, South Korea? On. I actually where's the bloody want, onesies though? Where's Chris? Well, I do want to talk about this though because so we've had a lot of surprises today, right? And 
it's very well known that this South Korean team has made some changes. And we also know that this Australian squad, this is like the only game that they are preparing for. Because when you're going up against South Korea, this is who you prepare for. Realistically, do you think this Australian team can beat South Korea? Uh, realistically and honestly, it does depend uh, on how much work the, the South Korean roster have been able to put together. In all honesty, it could just be individual skill that gets them across the line and they've just not had to worry too much about practice. But we saw what happened in that first game when the US didn't prepare for their first round opponent. They were preparing for their semi-final opponent. Didn't go quite well for them. For a team like Australia, mm -hmm. we've seen this incredible young talent. We've seen them play at a level above what people would have expected from them. I definitely think it's doable. Uh, there's a lot of compositions that the Aussies will play. They also won't play goats, by the way. So, yeah, major <laughs> koalas. <laughs> okay, and and then you know at the at the group stages though there was a team that Australia did have to go through uh, Wait, to on. get here, and 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 most notably one player Wait. in particular. <laughs> it was <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, when, uh, when the oh he's dead. Yeah, he's dead oh, again. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. This is so how we do it, uh, uh, by the way. Yeah. See you, Johnny. Yeah. Oh, man. I remember this fondly. Oh, oh, really? Really? It's oh. over time. I got to talk to you. <laughs> you have so many excuses. That was a reset. That was, was, a your, reset. was your mouse lagging at that uh, point? Hey, over time again. I'm touching the point. Where yeah. so what, you at? what you're saying is none of these are your fault. Yeah. No, they, I think... Look, look, man, I'm pretty sure tickets What's that? avoided Sorry? me as teammates who reported Hello? me for game based sabotage, Hello? but, you know... Yeah. Oh, Malcolm Turnbull, yeah. Johnny's a massive feeder? <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Oh. Yeah, you're dead, right? Yeah, all right. <laughs> Catch you when I'm back home, mate. We'll go for a punt. All right, cheers. See you later. I'm, 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 glad, I'm glad we got the call. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm really glad we got that call in. Uh, okay, Josh, give us some kind of uh, normalcy here. <laughs> you know, this matchup obviously is going to be really big here for Australia if they're able to take this win. Yeah. But South Korea, I mean, the two-time well, champs. Yes. For uh, a reason. Two-time champs, absolutely for back a reason. Back. Winners of the Overwatch League, six Koreans. These players are so good, and they've pulled from a load of different rosters to create a team that could legitimately be called a super team. Yes, we're not sure how much practice they've been able to have, and I'll definitely give you that one, but the amount of individual skill and the fact that they've actually been boot camping here, you know, in the practice facility and been able to play against all of these guys, I think even when other teams are talking about them and they're saying, oh, you know, I think this will be the weakest year for Korea, I think they're going to be very shocked. Mm -hmm. Any team coming up against South Korea has got to view themselves as the I, underdog. i tell you what, though. And especially Australia. There is a reason, I'll say this, there is a reason why the, the crowd in there should be getting behind this team Australia. The only American citizen left in the Overwatch World Cup <laughs> is playing on the Australian roster, of course. Punk's a dual citizen, so, you know, he's uh, still carrying pride from two nations on his shoulders. That's Look a heavy that. weight, but you young player, very nice. talented. I mean, these guys, are they're the youngest on average, I think, if not very close they to are, this yes. roster. They have the only two minors playing at the tournament currently, and mm -hmm. they have a lot of upcoming and developing talent. But uh, the Australia as a region, I think it's excellent that they've been able to get to this point. If they're able to take over Korea, I mean, yeah. best team in the world. All right, well, Wait, we've whoa, heard whoa, whoa, whoa. from our analysts Listen, I gotta take it, okay? okay. <laughs> and then we also heard from Uber, uh, who is definitely not biased. I do want to let that know, not biased at all. Don't let his attire fool you. He is calling this one down the line. <laughs> <laughs> but let's take a look at how Australia got to this point while I smell that shoe. Australia is a long way from Anaheim. In fact, it's a long way from anywhere. But as the 2017 Sydney group stage showed, the distance hasn't dampened the passion of the local Overwatch community. Likewise, the player base is determined to overcome the adversity of isolation and prove to the world exactly what a bunch of mates are capable of. The result? The 2018 Overwatch World Cup Team Australia. Led by the sole Australian player in the Overwatch League, Scott Custer Kennedy from the Los Angeles Valiant, Team Australia represents the best the Southern Island has to offer and is full of up-and-coming talent from Contenders Australia. This, this underdog team barely scraped into BlizzCon ahead of Denmark and Sweden and they have a tough road ahead of them. And that should be the defense coming down for Australia. An absolutely great hold from them. But if Australians are good at anything, it's smashing expectations from down under. Australia is the eternal underdog in esports, and that is no different in this year's BlizzCon. Everyone loves an underdog, and we know Team Australia supporters are the loudest and most passionate fan base in the world. We have a steep hill that we need to climb, and we need your support to show the Koreans that we are here to win it.
As for chance, Australia has one that we have been using for years and years and it has never let us down. Be sure to support our boys using Aussie Aussie Aussie, oi oi oi, and let's raise our koalas for Team Australia. Aussie Aussie Aussie, oi oi oi. They brought out the onesies earlier today and now they're gonna look to take the win against South Korea here in my question mark is how many people have got koalas lying about that they can raise? <laughs> was everyone supposed to bring a koala? Did I miss that memo? Yeah, you actually did not get the email. Oh, oh my bad. It was a, there was a, there was a, not an Overwatch wine email. Have you got email. a spare? I, I, I don't, unfortunately. Only got oh, one koala. His name's Jimmy. Uh, so here is the lineup. And there is one name on this lineup that everyone is very familiar with, and that's Custa. Oh, yep. This guy brings a lot of leadership to this team. We were talking about that when he joined the Los Angeles Valiant from the Fuel back in the Overwatch League, and I wouldn't be surprised, Reinforce, it's no different here. Yeah, he is the sole Overwatch League player on this team, and when we met them in our meeting, he was actually sort of the leader in the room in many ways. They, they were the ones mm -hmm. he, they were making fun of because he was supposed to be the star player and the leader of this That's team. That's how Australian so. culture works. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, you know, they like to have fun with him. And he is the main support as well. So he does a lot of the shot calling as well for this team, making sure uh, they do uh, execute their fights correctly. And here are some of the hero usage stats, actually, where they played a ton of Farah and Sombra in their qualifier in Bangkok. Yeah, and the most Anna as well as those other two heroes out of any of the teams in the qualifiers, they really relied on that Farah because they just told us candidly, we can't play the triple tank, triple support compositions. Mm -hmm. So if someone plays it into us, we have to try and use the Farah to blow it up. And so maybe that's a bit of a crutch that they're relying on, but I have a feeling that they're gonna rely a lot on these weird curveball strategies. And that could be a great way of trying to secure some upsets yeah, it, against it, it, the dominant team. We've seen it from for China. China. It exactly. Oh, there you yeah, go! Boy, this guy is an absolute madness. But yes, go on, Brand. We saw it from China. So right? from China, man. They play this unorthodox play style. It takes the teams off guard. The question is, are Korea going to be falling into the same trap that Finland did, where they just mm -hmm. don't really know how to react to it? I'm not too convinced by that. I feel like South Korea's players, that they are going to be able to adapt on the fly a little bit more. They're going to be in a better position to do so. But I still feel like this is a game that nobody's going to want to miss because it's got some upset potential. I'll tell you that one for free. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. I'm glad I didn't You're have to pay. You're literally paid to do this. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't have to pay for that one. Uh, <laughs> so now the boys from Down Under will face some tough competition. First matchup today is against South Korea, the two-time defending champions of the Overwatch World Cup, and they're looking for that nice three-peat this weekend. Let's go ahead and take a look at how they got to BlizzCon this year. The first stop of the 2018 Overwatch World Cup was Incheon, South Korea. The country is the soul of esports, where it all began. And its national team, it was, is, and may always be the final boss. The Los Angeles Valiant, Philadelphia Fusion, and NYXL are all represented in this super team. Who needs a winner maker when you got Joe Nag? They're cool and calculated with mechanical skill that can put the rest of the world to shame. Carpe popping off already. These players are representing a nation that has won every Overwatch World Cup thus far. As a result, the pressure is on South Korea to remind the world that they are the dominant force in Overwatch Esports. And that while your hope is cute, there's no way the gap is closing anytime soon. I had the pleasure of seeing this squad dominate in their home country firsthand. But this is not the same roster that they competed with in Incheon. This, they added some 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 different people. They, they took some folks out. Bren, your thoughts? Yeah, and honestly, I feel like this could affect Team South Korea quite negatively, looking okay. at this. I think making drastic changes, this is the most drastic change we saw out of any team in the World Cup. They changed three of their players. Ark was gone, Sebiowi was gone, and Mecha was gone. And in the place, there you go. You see the players in front of you right now, Fury, Animo, and uh, of course, Fletcher's come in as well. So, oh, Fletcher, and I, I mean, realistically speaking, yes, these players are the best the, in the world in some of their roles, right? I think you can argue for some other players, but when you make such a, a drastic change, 
it is going to be difficult to, to really sort of form any sort of cohesion over such a short period of time, even for the best players. Yeah, but even then, we saw, we saw Australia's hero usage, and they play a lot of Farah, they play a lot of Ana, etc. And that's going to be the problem when you play one single composition versus a team like South Korea. If, if, are you going to play Farah versus mm -hmm. Carpe's McCree? Yeah, I mean, no, that, that'd be you, foolish. You, you won't be able to do it, okay? And then you have Fury on the D.Va, Matrix in the far as well. So this is going to be a much tougher matchup for Australia. No matter how unique they are with their composition, South Korea is not as easy to sweep over. The, the guy that I want to talk about here is Fate, because he's been playing the main tank for South Korea, which was a little bit of a controversial pickup when he was first announced. Yep. Over guys like Gesture and Mano from the Overwatch, uh, uh, or the Overwatch League, so much success and he played a huge amount of Wrecking Ball. And he does have a lot of individual skill with the hero, but they kind of look shaky at times, particularly in this match against Finland. Having said that, he was still able to come out with some great performance himself. But it was definitely something that South Korea leaned into, and so did Australia at times. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. they will now again, because it's more powerful when we're here at BlizzCon than it was in the group stages. And so I could definitely see both teams trying it out in certain curveball strategies. We might even see some Wrecking Ball against Wrecking Ball, which we haven't seen at all across the entirety of the World Cup. So this could be a really interesting match in terms of how that hero fits in. Yeah, that, that's going to be the real telling thing as well. And, I, and I, you know, Reinforce, your point makes a lot of sense, right? Are you realistically going to play that far up? into a McCree. Yeah. Uh, I mean, CKM I, 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 can okay. play the Genji, yeah. but even then, you put out a Brig and you're going to have a rough time. So it's going to be hard for Australia to adapt. So. Okay, so, I mean, we, we no, well, you're right. And we, we talked about, you know, the matchup. We set the <laughs> stage for you all. Well, now let's get the predictions going. Bren, who do you got? I'm I'm scared to ask. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to be real with you right now. Keep I it real, baby. i got a controversial baby. one. i got one for the ages here, realistically speaking. I am going to be going with Team Australia. No, you're not. I'm going with Team Australia, mate. <laughs> no, I Brennan. Am. Would why, you like why? me to tell you the why? reason? Why? Okay, why? Why? okay why? I've got some feelings that I need to share with feelings. you about this. Feelings, feelings aren't facts. But analysis is, is, is deep within the, like <laughs> this straight up. I, I'll tell you right now the knowledge that I'm going to be spitting across this mic right now. Listen to me, okay? And open your ears because <laughs> it, it's going to be good. I, Realistically, I pointed out, Johnny, don't do it, man. Don't do it. I pointed out this roster. They changed drastically, right? They haven't got the practice in as much. South Korea, I think, are honestly a little bit of an arrogant team. I feel like they're going to be sort of in a similar situation to what USA was against the UK. I underestimated that. I underestimated the amount of prep time that UK put into USA. And I think that South Korea are going to underestimate the amount of prep time that they put. Don't get the dunce hat out. I don't. I think that they're going to be underestimating Australia <laughs> here. I'm saying. Please don't get okay. the dunce hat out. So, for example, you're saying that because yeah. Fury was in London and because Fate was in North America, they Precisely. couldn't practice properly. They could like, not practice properly. Their roster like was example, split across the region. Like, for example, Custer being in NA while the rest of his team was in Australia. But here's the counter. Sideshow, Sideshow actually made you sound smart. Here's the counterpoint. <laughs> Here's the counterpoint, though, right? You're great, Australia yeah. playing on 200 ping across the board, right? In 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 Australia as a region, <laughs> they're far away. All right, they're far away. All right, they've been playing with those training weights on. Shut it you up. So you're saying first. you're saying they're taking the training weights off and that's it. All right, you know what? Bren took so much time from that that we can't hear from reinforced in Sideshow. But I think Korea. given how this conversation has gone, Korea. we know exactly where they're leaning with their predictions. But Korea. it's time to get on with our last match of the day. It is South Korea going up against Australia. Let's send it to your casters, ZP and Jake. I gotta say, Golden Boy, it has been a crazy day. I think the wheels are coming off the wagon, but that's because there's been so many upsets. Things have just not gone as planned. Up has been down, left has been right. But you know what we do have right here? We have the Thunder from Down Under, Team Australia, taking on the two-time champions, the seemingly undefeatable juggernauts, South Korea. There's a lot to love about both of these teams. I mean, Australia, the up-and-comers, you really feel for them. I mean, they have to try out, compete against players on, you know, radically worse ping situations. They're trying out with 200, 300 ping. We've been talking to them about this. So this is really their chance. I mean, unfortunately, they have to play up against some of the best players in the entire world as we go to the Busan for our first control map. But Australia, this is their chance to prove what they can do. The land environment, erasing those advantages, disadvantages. Now it's just time to see who's the best players in the world. Personally, I'm seeing South Korea is going to be a very scary team to beat. 
So let's be super clear on this. Australia, they themselves say that control is not their path. It is the toughest for them to practice. It's not something that they should win. And going with the flow of the day, this means this is the most likely map for them to upset South Korea on. It has been that kind of day. Yeah, has certainly not much sensible has occurred, not much predictions. Lots of Dunn's hat wearing, although someone's going to have to wear it after those desk predictions. Yeah, you, you would think so. I mean, uh, Brent was kind of dreading it going, oh, man, don't, don't, don't get out the hat. But Brent could have the biggest brain of them all. But we're getting right into it here, Jake. And South Korea going to be running out with Carpe on that McCree. Very few things are scarier than that. Exactly. This is a comp we've seen a lot of sort of warming up in the Overwatch World Cup. You put that McCree on, but give him so much research. But it's CKM opening up on oh, the Jonak. And South happened. Korea sent packing straight back to spawn. Early pickoff. I'm not going to say it's happening yet, but I am afraid. I am afraid for really the fabric of the universe right now because this is a very good opening for Australia. It's likely going to give them first point, and it's the power of one big Hanzo pick. I mean, Australia has definitely won the meta game on mid here. I mean, McCree is very weak against double sniper setups. So you can see South Korea already returning to spawn, going to make the swap up. The question is, will they contest point? It looks like they want to go to. They don't want to give up that cap. Don't want to let Australia start racking up objective time. But Australia gets the flip. This could be big. And Jay Jonak is now receiving a ton of pressure. Jonak and Winston in his face. Drill very good. But two are going to fall in the back line. Fate and Fury, the front line of South Korea. Able to pierce right to the back. And Fury's not done yet. Trill going to fall. But Huss on the widow, looking for a few pickouts just it's too late, your front line has been decimated, and they give up control back to South Korea. Surprising here, too, to see Fleta on the Tracer and Carpe on the Sombra. Interesting, maybe portend some future swaps out of Fleta. We know how scary he is on characters like Doomfist, like Far. We've seen so much of that in the Overwatch League. So I love this by Carpe, choosing to play the Sombra to allow Fleta's flexibility to shine in a map like this. Well, speaking of changeups, you also have CKM going to the far. And the idea here is that you don't have to worry about the McCree because Carpe now on the Sombra. We'll see if CKM can make the most of the space he's being given. But Australia, for now, taking it a little bit slow, not immediately diving in, but Plenty of damage going to Fate. Fate lucky to get away with his life. And that means Australia, they seize the opportunity. They start moving it forward. But while this is going on, Jonak's down! Jonak got picked off by Trill. And Australia, now they had a 6v5. And it's getting a little bit of a brawl. Both teams down to support. But can they move in, Jake? Frag's going both ways. It's a very scrappy fight, but the HP is just dropping lower and lower for Team South Korea. Australia moving in, closing the noose here. This Ana Mercy, it's so much healing to deal with. Once picks start to go both ways, the double healer setup is just so dangerous to deal with. Jonak picked off early is so important, but South Korea, they still have the objective advantage, and Australia did have to use the Valkyrie, which is one of their most important ultimates in this composition. So Korea looking to come back in and maybe retake. They have nearly six ultimates to work with. They have a lot of power, and it would be absolutely ridiculous if they were able to go in and take this fight off that power alone. Carpe, of course, holding on TMP. Doesn't want to use it. Easy pick off on that crack, and they saw the opportunity. Cuss that blown right up. And South Korea, we talked about all the ultimates they have here. They're going to be able to save quite a bit here, Jake. And this is some inexperience shown by Huss. He commits his... Um uh, in for sight, at the same time, Trill's using the Primal Rage. There's no chance for them to win that team fight. Down two supports that quickly. So, a bit of an error there, I think, coming out from Team Australia. You don't want to be committing ults to a fight after you've already lost both supports. That's a little bit crazy. So now, they might get punished for it. I mean, South Korea in a dominant position. This team is ready to use that sound barrier. And I just frankly don't know what the response will be from Australia. Punk's going to have to come up huge. Not only is he going to have to get a big self-destruct here, but they also need to not all get hit by the MP. MP got come in, and they immediately go for the tanks, right? Trill blown up immediately. South Korea is playing this by the book. You get rid of the tank abilities, you deal with the tank, it's going to be very difficult to turn the fight around. What's so surprising here for me is that why hasn't Australia switched off onto the Bermuda? Jay Jonak taking on CKM, turning off the barrage. Fate's in deep, they're trying to focus him, but he's still got the primal. He hasn't even had to use it yet. Fleta going deep into the spawn once more and looks just like clean up here for the scene South Korea. South Korea going, we don't want a long overtime fight. We're just going to bring the fight to you. It is instant delivery, sending you back to your spawn, right from your spawn. A little bit of last minute delay coming in here from Australia, but they are simply staggering onto the point and South Korea starting out dominant. And to go back to what we heard from the sensible half of the desk, Team South Korea <laughs> is not a team that you can lock a composition against. You can't just expect to play your comfort picks and succeed against players this strong and this flexible. You have to be dealing with them. You have to be countering their metagame, keeping them on their toes. Right there, it just felt like, well, Australia had the right comp for mid, but as soon as South Korea flipped the point, they were in control. 
I mean, why does Australia not bring out the Brigida there? They really need that answer to the Tracer and Sombra. Normally, we don't see those two characters together precisely because Brigida exists. It's hard to say. I mean, it seemed like one of those situations where Australia thought, all right, we want to fight this composition, we don't need the swap. Whereas, you take a look at the South Korean side, they were very adaptable. And in fact, the only reason why we saw Carpe likely stay on the Sombra is because he had EMP. If EMP was down, probably would have went to a McCree or even a Widow to punish DKM even harder. Yeah, certainly here. Yeah, this could be an interesting matchup. We've got Trill on the Hammond. We haven't seen any Hammond so far on this map. Could work out here, but Carpe on the McCree is going to be so deadly. This is a very open map. And given that he has the speed boost constantly with him, Animal is going to be a major protecting factor. It's going to be very hard for CKM to catch up. Just, I mean, he might be able to get some good spam in, but it's hard to finish off a McCree with a speed boost. The one thing here that might be in their favor is that Trill is going to be in Carpe's face immediately. He plays a very good Hammond, even though Hammond's weak. Oh, CKM's already down. Joan Hex says, you know what? It's fine. I'll take care of this. CKM gonna get Rez back up, and meanwhile, Trill gives up his life for the distraction, and South Korea absolutely unfazed, just rejecting Australia from the point. Trill getting absolutely destroyed by the focus from South Korea. All six players waiting for his initiation, they instantly punish him, move forward, and cap the point. You can't underestimate the amount of burst damage and single target control that this comp offers to Team South Korea. Flashbang into Brigida stun is such a long disable that even a Hammond is an easy pickoff during it, especially when you have the Discord Orb and McCree laying in headshots on top of it. Carpe looking like an absolute machine sniping down this combo. Carpe is the one person that needs to fall here. Australia needs to formulate a game plan to get in and deal with this McCree because Carpe just simply is that good. We're gonna see Trill move in, but Pile Driver doesn't even hit Carpe. Carpe going to look at the sky, brings up the Deadeye, looking for those happy little skulls, a Kraken already down, so it's a man advantage for South Korea. And again, good zone control, good support. They are playing at such a high level right now, and Australia has no answer. Carpe with the perfect Deadeye. Deadeye and ult that you don't necessarily need to get kills with. One of the strongest zoning ults in the game. In this case, Custa and CKM are forced to essentially stay out of the fight for six seconds. So Carpe is zoning main healer and the main DPS of Australia. And everyone else from South Korea can just clean up the remaining players. Now Australia going to be looking to bring this back. They don't have that many fights left, which means that this EMP needs to be successful. He's looking for Jonak in the back, but Jonak is so good. Yeah, no, Jonak can get struck by the EMP, but Carpe moves the support. Huss can't finish it off, and South Korea is dealing with this quite well. Now they're going to be able to use support ults if needed. The effect of the EMP is gone, and Jonak is going to casually transcend, keep his team alive. They're going to look for Punk, self-destruct, comes back the other way, and CKM is down. South Korea, they're using their resources so effectively here, Jake. And the timing is going to work out perfectly for them. This is looking like a potential last fight scenario. Everyone from Team South, or Team Australia, excuse me, is going to fall. Team South Korea chasing into the spawn. Even the Baby Diva falls there in the end. And based on this timing, I think Trill or Haas is going to be forced to touch the point and essentially suicide just to keep the map going, just to keep overtime on. And South Korea is already on 99%. Australia has nothing to their name. Carpe's uh -oh. flank wants to shut this fight down before it even begins. He really wants to go for the ultimate high noon here. The Deadeye from the back. You're looking for Carpe. You can't find him. Let's see what he does. Australia, they have to dive on the point. They get fade early. Carpe coming back in from the flank. Deadeye up. Pillars, got to gang his way, but gets a little bit of partial damage. Picks off Custa. It was enough. The mercy of the fight. The far out of the skies. South Korea grounding the Air Force of Australia here, but Australia Fighting back a bit, South Korea doesn't quite have it. As Jonak says, it's fine. I'm also DPS. Three pickoffs for Jonak. And South Korea, they can map one look so easy. Closing that map out with both tank ults in the bank. The rumors of South Korea's weakness were greatly exaggerated. It seems looking so strong, so coordinated, so focused. I mean, frankly, this is what I, exactly what I expected. Even though they didn't get the most practice time, they didn't have the most prep, they're one of the most experienced teams or collections of six players, really, in the world. Every one of these players is incredibly competent. We talked with their coaches. The reason for these recent roster swaps was to fit the current meta as it shifted off the last patch. There's so much competence on this team that I'm not surprised that they're looking this coordinated with just a little bit of practice time. All right, well, of course, I would say Swift Map 1, but to get a little bit insight in... Well, you know, let's think about this here, Jake, as we take a look here at the highlights of Map 1. I mean, it was a pretty quick map, I would say. Yeah, it definitely felt like South Korea was in full control. I mean, on Map 1, well, at least Australia had their number on the first team fight, but as soon as uh, as soon as soon South Korea was able to get a clean fight going, I mean, even when they lost Jonak first, the aggression absolutely just did even more, right? They got even more than one support pick and somehow managed to snowball that fight anyway. So South Korea, it looks like every comp that they've matched up on has been good for them. So we had to wait for the Shoeys to commence, but now we're going to be taking a look at some insight from the Australian side.
What's up? I am down here with the GM of Team Australia, RQT. So how does it feel to be in charge of a team that has such a hype audience? I can barely hear you over that. It feels amazing. I'm really proud of the team we've picked. And we were always just aiming to get to BlizzCon since we didn't have the Overwatch League showing other teams had. Uh, we got here and we just want to make it as competitive as possible with Korea. Awesome, awesome. Well, as we know, Australia has a very infamous chant. So uh, do you mind leading us and this crazy loud crowd behind us in it? Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! 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 Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! Well, that was fantastic. My eardrums are blown out now. I need to go get some hearing aids. So we're going to kick it back over to ZP and Jake. Thank you, Mika, and I gotta say, the Australian crowd is one of the best. Brings back good memories of Sydney a year ago. They are some of the most passionate fans in the world. But Jake, map two, already about to be upon us. Blizzard World is gonna be the arena. How could this help Australia? Well, this was certainly a strong point for them back at the group stage in Bangkok and Thailand. I mean, this is where they looked at their strongest, somehow making the Farah work on a map that I wouldn't traditionally think of as being that Farah-centric map. But I can't help but feel that they partially benefited from Hus's Widowmaker being stronger than most others in that group stage. Now going up against Carpe, that's not exactly the case anymore. We saw how aggressive not only Carpe was, but also Fury and Jonak keeping the pressure on CK his Farah feels much more constricted than it ever felt in the group stages, and that just shows the experience of Team South Korea. Farah Mercy is a relatively one-dimensional comp. We only see it on a few points because it's so dependent on the right kind of geometry. When you hide from the enemy hit scan, you want to still be able to do something, still have some good spam angles. But if those don't exist and you're just hiding around the corner, you're essentially sacrificing both your Farah and your Mercy for no real gain. So Australia, they're going to have to figure it out. I think the sidelines are pretty difficult to use on Blizzard World if Carpe ends up being as hot as I expect on this Widow. Yeah, and I mean, the biggest problem here too is that it's not just Carpe, right? You have crazy amounts of support benefits going to him where not only is he well protected by his tanks, getting proper healing, but then the supports are also doing the job of damage in the meantime where even if Carpe gets the elimination credit, right? You have to think that for a lot of those eliminations, it's Jonak laying the orbs into the sky or laying in the Ana darts if he decides to play that. So it's definitely mission impossible to a degree for CKM and maybe we won't see him go to the far as much as the series goes on. Right now, of course, we have a look at uh, Australia as they're setting up and CKM looking to favor the Brigida a little bit more. I am a little bit confused, I must admit. Custa on the Torbjorn. Looks like he potentially wants to commit to it here. Hasn't swapped yet, and time is running a little bit low here. Yes, he's leaving spawn. They want to go with the Torb strat. Remember this when you think about your T-Mobile MVP. Custa right here, not afraid to bring out the new Torb. We get to see our first Molten Cores, hopefully, uh, of the Overwatch World Cup. Yeah, that's right. Remember, guys, it's, you know, you do want to vote for the best player, but also think about who's pandering to you. Who really wants that vote? And right now, Custa is the Torb. He wants your vote. Team South Korea, though, a classic somber Genji comp. This is going to enable them to flank the Junkrat, flank the, the, the Torbjorn, and punish those weak characters. They're, they're not so strong at fighting in the kind of engagements that somber Genji is going to create. It's going to be a real struggle also to get picks with the Junkrat. With no Mercy damage boost and no 150 HP character to target, it's a lot more difficult to get those reliable pickoffs. We'll see if South Korea has the answer to this new age Torbjorn strategy where Custa would love to use the new Molten Core, of course. Very good at Aries and Al. Fate jumps on in and Fate goes on out. Got stuck by the turret. I couldn't even move in the end of it. And Custa just creating space on the Torbjorn. The turret still old reliable there. Hasn't been dealt with and South Korea is thrown back by this Torbjorn power defense. You know, I think that was actually uh, Huss's Junkrat trap combined with Trill's halt. And that's a classic combo because when Winston comes in, he just wants to cleave you up and, you know, get a bunch of damage, farm his ult up. But when you halt him into a trap, he's an easy pick off for a character like Junkrat. That's too much burst damage to handle. We can see though, South Korea recognizes Australia has no hit scan aside from their Ana. And that's not really strong enough to deal with the heals and Mercy provides. So Fleta looking to spam out Torbjorn. New Farah even stronger against Torbjorn than she's been in the past. Also very strong against shields like we're seeing here from Orisa. Custa though, the turret finds Faith. The turret just doesn't miss. Flutter though, also not really missing a whole lot. Finds a Kraken, 
early on, but under so much pressure, the turret, the big part there, Punk, just did a little bit of a finishing blow. And Australia managing to make this tour power defense work. And here comes Riptire. Might be a little bit late here, Jake, but you know, you know what to do. Nice pathing, but he's getting zoned out on the flank. He needed to commit a little bit quicker there to find a support. It ends up, ends up getting spammed down by Fate here. Fate getting so much value out of that slam, absolutely splitting up Team Australia. This comp really doesn't work so well when they start losing players, but the Molten Core comes out. Lava everywhere on the point. The floor is Lava. Costa using the new Molten Core, but even though it zones out South Korea a little bit, I think Flutter looks at it goes, well, I'm just going to stay in the sky. It's not really bothering me that much. Going to get two pickoffs. Australia now starting to bleed, and even as they were trying to stagger back in, it's not going to be enough. South Korea able to take the point, and I'm sorry to say, probably going to be the end of Torbjorn. Yeah, definitely pretty rough to try and keep the Torb into second point, although I know a little something about that. Let's see, though, if uh, Carpe on his EMP can actually get what he's looking for here. Australia, they need to take this fight and just build ults, so Carpe wants to hold his if it's at all possible. Yeah, this is where South Korea would love to get ahead on the ultimate economy here, and EMP, one of the best tools for being able to do that. Pushing up the payload, Australia now has to decide where do they want to engage this. It's definitely going to be rough with no ultimates in the bank. I mean, CKM does have the rally online. Oh, but cancels the EMP. Great play by CKM. Shuts down the ultimate from Carpe. That's really the initiation from Team South Korea. Yeah, the EMP's gone. You interrupt it mid-cast. Not going to do what you want. Jonak has invested Transcendence with very little effect. South Korea's ultimate economy in complete shambles because of that play to deny Carpe. It was excellent stuff from CKM. And you look at how South Korea right now is a little bit lost in this fight. A Kraken getting slammed on top of the mines. This might be the death of him. He's trying to escape, but he can't really move without risking running into a mine. It's just a beatdown by fate. Repeat melees to finish off the frag. And the card has been moving this entire time. Australia, you've got to contest that objective. You have, at best, one chance to hold this. But they did play that fight really well, getting a ton of ultimates out of South Korea, and at the same time, building up quite a few of their own. They got the ultimates out, but now they need a stop. But you look at Flutter, was setting up for the pulse bomb, didn't quite have enough in the ambush position. Now, South Korea looking to move on in. Flutter drops a pulse bomb, doesn't quite get what he's looking for. Mimo Custa punishes Carpe on the other end. Trill, disruption with the Primal Rage. And as good as South Korea has been, they are going to get stopped a bit here. The ultimate advantage does swing back in the favor of South Korea for that team fight, or excuse me, towards Australia for that team fight. And now, oh, I'm, I'm, I really like this swap out of Fate going to the Winston. I was uh, just gonna mention that without that um, Winston bubble, you're a lot more vulnerable to Punk's self-destruct. So Fate maybe recognizes that that's incoming, wants to swap and, and preemptively counter it. But we're back to this power pocket Carpe build. But can they deal with Huss at long range? That's gonna be a real struggle. They need to use this speed boost very, very efficiently, sneak up on that Widow and not play at her side lines. Definitely going to be interesting. The crowd getting into it here for Australia. They would love to see a second stop. South Korea, though, uh, is merciless. Fate leaps in early, gets chunked pretty hard. South Korea going to take it easy for just a moment. Get Fate healed back up. Australia goes, actually, we want to take this fight. Both teams getting into it. Australia dropping the beat, diving on in. Seekhan swinging that rocket mace. And Fury going to be falling off the mech early. It is an advantage, but they lose their Brigida. South Korea can turn this around, but Trill, he's built another Primal Rage. Exactly the disruption that Australia is needed, and Trill is gonna be the difference maker. Trill getting so much value off these Primals, fight after fight, just the complete savior of South Korea there. Once Fleta found that pick, I thought for sure that was gonna be South Korea's point capture, but turning it right back around, and honestly, I think Australia has found the better of this compositional matchup. The Widow is so free against this composition because Fate just can't really overextend into the high ground. I mean, Lucio and Brigida are so strong at peeling that there's really no threat that stops the Widow from free firing. Not only that, but he has the Infrasight up for the next fight, which means this is gonna be so annoying for South Korea. They have to wait for the Infrasight to go away. This is valuable time. They're under a minute, but now Fate, he's had enough jumps, and no! Absolutely chunked! Couldn't get the Primal Rage up off the engage. It's what he wanted, it's what he didn't get, and Trill dives in immediately and finds Jonah. Australia's counter-punching has been sublime. Really getting aggressive there and just trying to use those peel mechanics. I mean, you can see Fate, he wants to land on somebody, do some damage, but they just keep juggling him in the air with their boop abilities and absolutely destroy him with that Zenyatta's Discord. So a Kraken maybe getting a little trigger happy with that Transcendence. I don't know if that was fully necessary. So South Korea, their ult advantage sort of finally swung, swung back into their favor. This is their time. Early self-destruct, Fury down immediately. South Korea, this is their final fight. 10 seconds left. Carpe going to the back. 
looking for anything, but under so much pressure. Still found T Camp. Stay with the primal range. Makes room. Deadeye from Carpe. Looking to DMAC pump. Not quite going to get it, but the rest of the damage certainly there. And South Korea making a valiant last stand. It's an overtime. They don't care. They're going to get point B. This is the power of the McCree comp. If you can make that fight scrappy, if you can dislodge the Widow, that's when McCree really starts lighting things up. Flashbang and roll are just these perfect close combat abilities that really shine against characters like Winston and D.Va. So Carpe making it work here, and now I'm gonna make the switch over to that full 3-3 setup. On this tight corridor as a last point, I think this is a great swap. I think it makes a ton of sense. South Korea showing their experience and also understanding that they need to win a fight with very few ultimates invested. There's not many comps that do that more efficiently than the 3-3 setup. And that's where you trust in Jonak's judgment. They have the transcendence up and ready. They know he can pop at the right time. Custa already down. What a making good use of the Brigida. Three uncontested pickoffs. They use the transcendence to make it nice and safe, but it is a rot in favor of South Korea. They are one fight away. I will say though, Australia is playing this very intelligently. Team Australia not committing ult to that last team fight, getting the transcendence out of Jonag. They have a big opportunity to stop the card in overtime. There's no point in winning that fight early because they know what really matters is getting that stop before last. Now both support ultimates available and Trill's Primal Rage. We've seen what he's been able to do with that before. Early stun on the card pack, 10 HP and down, they finish him off. Barrier and transcendence overlapping here for Australia. Little bit of waste, but it might not matter because this could be the last fight. Final 15 seconds, two man edge to Australia. South Korea on the ropes, and now they have to try not to get staggered and still hit the point in five seconds. Likely not gonna happen. Australia holding strong here on last. And that means here, Jake, they do have a chance here on Blizzard World. South Korea will go no further than that on Blizzard World, but still a tough test ahead of Australia on their map choice here on the hybrid map type. This is still a map that's very easy to full hold. It's very rare that teams finish with a whole lot of time left. So this is certainly winnable for both sides, but Australia, definitely the momentum I would say is in their favor now. Now let me ask you this. Do you think the strategy Australia came out with, the early Torbjorn opening, was that effective against South Korea? I mean, I think it caught South Korea off guard, but what really made that last hold possible was uh, a Team Australia's performance on second point. Team Australia, as you know, right when they switched off that Torbjorn composition, they had about three or four of their ults reset to 0% as those players just swapped characters. Losing that much tempo usually means a few free fights for the opposing team, but somehow Australia pulled those fights out, and that's what made South Korea have that only, you know, one or two chances on last point. So really, I feel like it was the second point play from Team Australia that allowed them to get the full hold on last. Well, and speaking of that second point play, the person you'd really have to look at there would be Trill, where he was getting Primal Rage up at an absolutely absurd rate, and you look to every fight the Australia won, they did it in large part because of the absolute disruption that Trill was able to put down. But let's not forget CKF. That early EMP interruption onto Carpe really seemed to be a big deal. Yeah, exactly. CKM really playing well, but I couldn't agree more. Definitely, if you're going to look at this in a classical sense, I mean, Trill really is the MVP of Team Australia. He's the one who's sort of performing at that super, super top level on every uh, main tank that he plays. And Winston, and, uh, especially Winston and Wrecking Ball, I think, I, I felt like his specialties to me. It feels like that's where he's most comfortable, constantly disrupting, being really efficient with his ultimate generation as well. So Australia again be taking to the offense here. CKF going to be on Genji. It's a hero that I, people have been a little bit nervous about for him, but he has a chance for redemption here. South Korea want to change things up, not going with the classic 3-3 setup, and no Brigida this time, which may be punishing here. We saw this before in Team China versus Team Finland. The Genji is able to farm a ton of Dragon Blade in this situation because there's no hit scan really to punish him out and force him out. I mean, Carpe's going to struggle to do that on just the Sombra, so Fleta needs to get value out of this Doomfist. Uh, it looks like Australia that wants to make the switch over to Mercy and maybe some other characters too. Australia deciding that it's better to switch now than switch later when you'd be in a situation that your ult economy be even worse. I don't love the Ferris swap here, honestly, from Team Australia. I don't think it makes a ton of sense against Ana and Zenyatta. That combination alone with the Diva's help and a little bit of burn from the Sombra is enough to take down a Pharah. We'll see just how they do here. CKM with an opportunity. Looking for the Doomfist. Can't land the rockets. What up? Totally fine, just a little bit off, but that's enough. You gotta be accurate with the new Farah. Australia really taking their time here, but South Korea is okay with that. A minute burned off the clock, but now they're looking towards Fury. Fury eating a lot of damage. Flutter under fire, can't get a pick off, and now Australia has a six on five. They take a moment to heal up. They go back in. CKF laying in the rockets right now, and Australia slowly but surely getting into South Korean territory. Here we go. 
Oh, Trill gets in. I think he blocked the sleep there, but Jonak just getting spam healed up. He can't get any value out of this nano boost. He's going to be forced to pop the Primal Rage, but it just gets the Transcendence out, and now South Korea streaming back onto the point on the back of their Transcendence. We no defensive support ults on the side of Team Australia. Jonak just wasn't phased there. He goes, you know what? I trust my heal. I trust the fact that I can Transcend. Pumpe, though, is picked off. And oh, the Barrage from TKM does get the D.Va, so it's not without anything, but he gives his life for it. Fleta, meanwhile, on the Tracer. Pulse Bomb ready, gets hacked. This is real dangerous, but again, you see the support coming in from Animo there. Able to keep him up. The hack is gone. The Pulse Bomb is up. Did it stick? No, not quite. But Australia winning the War of Attrition here, despite the attempted heroics at the end. An extremely close team fight. Felic like was going both ways there at different points, but Australia, lots of time to work with here on second point. CKM still on the far, I believe she can make it work here on to second. I think it only gets more difficult as the map goes on though, so this is gonna be an even tougher test for CKM. I'm a little bit surprised to see Carpe still in the Sombra here. This would be, it seems like it would be an ideal situation for a swap. He's only 15%. Or yeah, or, or for Fleta, you know, I, I would expect to see something like a McCree, a Widow, Soldier 76 come out, but CKM already onto the Brigida, so perhaps South Korea now caught in an even worse position. Tracer Sombra, very, very vulnerable to the Brigida. It's very hard to execute the kind of aggression that you want to be doing with Tracer and Sombra. And we've already seen that TKM has very good game sense interrupting Sombras when they're going for the EMP. So even for a player like Carpe, it's not going to be a free lunch. Australia going to go in. Nano boost on the troll. Self-destruct leading the way. Animo caught. Trill gang on Jonak. The support for South Korea is down. But South Korea does strike back. It's a bad day to be a support. Carpe, a little bit of a dose of medicine to the other side. And that's enough to give South Korea at least a bit of a delay. Both back Backlines being slaughtered right there, but it looks like the ultimate exchange is going to favor Team South Korea. They didn't invest as much into that fight, and it was essentially a watch. We're going to see Team South Korea get back to the fight and contest this cart very, very quickly here. Now you got to look towards Toss. He actually has the EMP a bit earlier than Carpe here. Going to drop down, going to use the EMP. Now is the follow through going to be there? Fleta immediately punished. Can't use abilities when you're half drilled. On to Jonak again. Every primal rage just beating up the Overwatch League MVP. And Trill could not be deeper. Trill sending the supports packing. That means absolutely no heals for any of the tanks on Team South Korea. They're contesting without any resources, but the EMP does come in, aiding them a little bit. Now there's no abilities to focus those tanks down. Fate, though, might need to get back to the card soon. Fury's trying to get back in his mech. It looks like Team South Korea might be managing to hold this. It, it's close, but you're absolutely right. They are. Fate was able to buy enough time. The front line of South Korea working very well with each other here. Two minutes and 20 seconds left for Australia to get through second. Frankly, I thought that point was all over for Team South Korea once Trill made that massive play with the Primal Rage, taking down Jonak and sending Animo far out of LOS to his team, but somehow Team South Korea fighting back even without any of their healer's resources. And South Korea, of course, just a very disciplined team, and now you go to the next fight here, Jonak, Transcendence in reserve. South Korea very willing to dive in with this. Animo, under pressure, Jonak, are you gonna save him? He's super low. Oh, so low, finally falls, Hustendale division, Jonak goes down, couldn't use the res, suddenly the supports for South Korea are gone, and Australia with another excellent opportunity to get through second, and this time it's going to be theirs. Australia recognizing their mistakes, playing a little bit more slowly and conservatively, it's Hunt opening up on an animal, and then I think it's CKM stun that prevents Jonak from using the transcendence as he wants to. CKM just been the denier of ults here so far. His Brigida game sense has been quite good, Jake. Yeah, certainly one of the better um, players at just shutting down those EMPs. It's such an important skill and such a difficult one to practice. Really requires you to just be a really high intelligence player, someone who understands the game really deeply. Early EMP, comes in. Jonak down! Only Jonak, though, doesn't catch anybody else. Is it enough? It's gonna be enough. Already two players down. Huska translocate out just in the nick of time. Australia keeping the foot on the throat of South Korea here. I can't believe what I'm seeing as Trill making even more space. They're one fight away from evening up the series. The only problem I have with that team fight is it cost Team Australia three major ultimates to get that team fight win. South Korea uses nothing. They're starting to rebuild their bank. Carpe on the Zarya is going to be really powerful here. CKM makes the switch back to the far. It might get some value now. The hit scans are gone. Carpe, though, again, counter swapping to the McCree. South Korea, they have run out of mulligans. A fight they must win. A transcendence reserve. Here comes South Struck right down Broad Street. Not going to connect. Fleta easily shielding it off. Husto finds Carpe. The big gun of South Korea is down. Six on five for Australia. Fate, Primal Rage in the back, forces Custom back. Primal Rage still up, gonna need the pop it soon. Low HP, a Kraken down. But Fate trusting in his healers, doesn't Primal here. And South Korea so disciplined, turns it around. Jonak back with the vengeance. 
Great decision making by Fate. Could have been easily tempted to primal there. He knows he doesn't need it. Exactly as you were saying, trust his team. He knows that Jonak's still alive farming in the back line. Flood is still alive on the Brigida. There's no real risk of us losing this team fight, even if I fall. So great risk taking by Fate. Exactly the right decision. And I love these fast swaps by Carpe. Just switching back and forth, staying constantly ahead. Torp one Australia is bringing Now he's on Torpor, though. Yeah. So maybe I spoke a little too soon. Let's see if this works out. No, one good Torp deserves another. Oh, and he's immediately down. CKF says, no, no, no. You're not running that versus us. 65 for Australia, but CKF pays with his life. South Korea with the spawn advantage. They will trade out with you all day and all night. Australia down to their final minute to take the map. I'm not super sure about the tour pick, but um, you know, if you're winning the team fight, you can't really complain too much, right? Look, just look at the results. Don't look at the tour getting buffed immediately. It simply baited CKM into a bad decision. Yeah. That's a story we're going to stick with. It. I'm not sure. I think Carpe's trying to do this to maybe bait CKM to play Faro. Maybe that's his, his, his idea here. I'm not sure if he's even got the turret out right now. I mean, he, he just has the hammer out right now. You know, by the way, you can get that hammer in the gear store here at BlizzCon. Just saying. Ooh. But now. We're going into the next fight. Australia gonna leap in. Trill, early primal raid to start things out here, but he is punished. He almost falls, immediately has to get out. Self-destruct views, no victims either side. And South Korea, we're down to the final 14 seconds here, Jake. Australia has to make a move. They're down one early. Here comes Carpet, brings up the hammer. Diving on in. South Korea repelling Australia. The momentum from those down under falling here at the last minute and Blizzard World ending with a whimper as South Korea holds strong. Well, Torbjorn looking like the new meta here on Blizzard World. Carpe somehow making that work, actually getting a ton of value there, especially in that last team fight, just fragging out those right clicks into the Winston, <laughs> just completely shredding him on top of the Discord. South Korea with an inventive composition that totally works out. I, I didn't believe in it. I've been proven wrong. Hey, really, the Torb on both ends has some surprising effectiveness, but Man, one thing I will say here is that, talk about the adjustment from South Korea. They just focused on Trill, who's doing so good otherwise. But guys, can Australia bring this back, or will South Korea complete the sweep? We'll find out after the break. The Overwatch World Cup is brought to you by Omen by HP, the official PC of the Overwatch World Cup. And by T-Mobile, America's fastest unlimited network. They don't just play for a team. They play for every fan, every rival, every moment, every match. And when everyone watching expects the best, they perform with the best.
The 2018 Overwatch World Cup is brought to you in part by Corsair, T-Mobile, Samsung SSD, and NVIDIA. South Korea are on top of the world right now as they are 2-0 to zero over the boys from down under. Welcome back, everyone, to the desk, and they look like they're having a really good time out there. You see there. those GG's? Yes, so. That was Wait, amazing. <laughs> that was amazing. I didn't it, see was it. Like, it was like great games, you know, that was hard for not hashtag not GG easy. It was like <laughs> but the most respectful, wholesome sign I've ever seen. You know what? What I'm going to do is in the middle of, of this next game, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to get that sign and bring it in here. <laughs> so wherever you are, not GG easy sign person, I am stealing your sign. Go Golden Boy is just admitting to theft before it happens. <laughs> <laughs> As your legal advisor, I've got to say that's just... Wait, you're my legal advisor. <laughs> I do Don't do it. This is a it's a wrap. Okay, well let's go into the highlights here <laughs> for games one and two Ooh. of this South Korea Australia showdown and. You know, we started things off on Busan, and you know, this was uh, oh, oh my lord, incredibly, oh, wow. incredibly unfair because South Korea had whole map of them. <laughs> oh, no, really? <laughs> Top tier analysis with Jonathan Larson, ladies and gentlemen. I will say this though: one of the first things that Team Australia said to us in their individual one-on-ones was all all control maps across the board are their worst maps. Mm. Like they they really dislike this game mode in particular. So I had a feeling good the game thing they have go to this way. Yeah. Good thing they have to reverse sweep and win a control map. To don't try, don't remind me of that one, please. <laughs> okay. uh, but yeah. yeah, so I, I had this kind of expectation coming into this one here, and I, we did see a bit of a turnaround as well as it went into the late maps. But for this one here, I mean, we've got to pick up South Korea as well. These guys were playing realistically how we expected to a certain degree. Yeah, they were throwing well, in curveballs. Australia are using the Hammond, they're using the Farah and stuff like that. And South Korea have got the answer. They have the flashbang, they have the Brigitte's done, mm -hmm. and they are oh, just destroying. Go. But this, this was fantastic. Want. They discussed curveballs, but I thought it was a big bait. When Custer threw himself off, yeah. he killed himself at the beginning, and then he comes out on the top. I, I will say the Torbjorn made sense, though, because they put it up there. <laughs> This is the sentence I said in 2018, but they put the they put the turret up there, and it was stopping the Pharaoh from being able to like it, you know have an impact yeah. you know for the time being, right? I mean, you know, it was no, pretty no. good. It was like a reasonably so long. good strat. You, you gotta use more of those pocket strats because it's looking like quick play out there, and you know if you want to make it competitive, you need more of the Torbjorn. I, I think Ben agrees. I yeah. absolutely do yeah, agree. Great. But Thank also, if we are let's, let's pick so up Australia. Australia. Okay. Sorry, Johnny. No, you go ahead, mate. No. Be respectful. Oh, no, you do it. Okay, Every, no, you first. You know no. what? The theme of the Sorry. desk is Respectful. respectful. Him. He can analyze. Okay, the, <laughs> it's respectful. No, you analyze. The Johnny, not, you go GG, first. not GG easy sign out there, okay? We, we boy, love each first. other. All right? I will not, I will refuse to analyze this uh, because, you, you know. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> whoa, whoa, what? That's Language. Rude. Rude. What? It's so mean. Very okay. mean. For, to, to be serious for a second, though, Please, Australia Josh. have genuinely been playing yeah. Korea fairly close yes. in that second map. They had two minutes at the end where they only had to push a couple of meters to get across the line. Carpe goes off to Torbjorn with his own <laughs> cheese strat, and they, they ended up not making it work. But at the end of the day, they were in a very winnable situation for Blizzard World. So I don't think they're necessarily out the series yeah. in terms of getting points on the board. I do think that Korea are going to be able to lock it up, though. And I will say, though, our next map is going to be Temple of Anubis. And having played Australia myself in Thailand, mm -hmm. in, in the Bangkok Qualifier, that was one of their best maps, and they revolutionized yeah. that map throughout the tournament because they had this Orisa composition on the high ground, playing with the big Brigitte, and it was so hard to take that point. So in many ways, we're going into an assault map that I think that Australia are feeling incredibly confident on. So if you want to start the reverse sweep, this is definitely the map you they have to, because otherwise well. you're out of the tournament. Great point. I am so smart. <laughs> well, nice, Johnny. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But I also, to add on to your point about Anubis being a very good map for them, that was how they qualified for the playoffs as well yeah. against China. Mm -hmm. yeah. that was the, They only need to win that one map. They full held them on the first point. So there you go, Johnny. Well yeah. done. Yeah, but then, you know, we, we highlighted that they were not big fans of, oh, you see, we all come back and it's just love and nice, and then they're going to fight afterwards. Uh, so we... We did mention, though, that they don't like that Australia does not like control. They don't like to control game type. Yep. They, they would need, in order for them to pull off this reverse sweep, they will need to win a control, Josh. Yeah. It, it, you know, is that possible at this point? You know, does it start here at Temple of Anubis? You're asking the wrong person, I think, because if you want me to give you a little bit oh, of hope, oh, oh, I'm going to be more Aspen, realistic. Aspen. Okay, Aspen. Bren. 
<laughs> Bryn, they need to win Temple of Anubis. Is this an opportunity for Australia to start the reverse sweep? Easy money. And I'm not just saying that because Mitch Leslie is over there and he's been working out. Um, it, it is going to be realistically uh, the, the stepping stone they need, Golden Boy. Okay. Speaking to you in particular now. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> this is what they need to do. Temple of Anubis, they win that. That gets the ball rolling. Momentum's in their side. They're like... Uh, Tyson Fury. I don't know. I'm thinking of a boxing uh, boxer. Mike now. Tyson. Muhammad Ali. No, Tyson Fury in particular. He's a British guy. <laughs> okay. Um, he's okay. not Australian. Don't know why I use that particular analogy. But no, either. This is how they start it. This is how it gets going. <laughs> Trust me on this one, Golden Boy. When I get this right, I'm going to be hailed as the greatest analyst of all time. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure that that is exactly what people are going to be saying after this match is over, Bren. 100. percent Thank you. They're not. No. Uh, so, <laughs> what is your face? What is your face? <laughs> Just best analyst. What are you? <laughs> <laughs> you want to have a go, mate? You want? Oh no! You want? You know that these guys are just having a giggle. An analyst, takedown. analyst takedown. Analyst takedown. Analyst <laughs> takedown. 2018. Right after BlizzCon, the Sunday after BlizzCon. That's when it all goes down. So all official. Uh, yes, exactly. So you know what? These guys are trying to be great analysts. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're, it's, it's, oh. it's a strong attempt, and we want you to be a great observer. Oh, look at that. You like that? That's right, because now you can download the Overwatch World Cup viewer, and with that, you can watch the games yourself. Now, here's the thing. If you happen to miss the action, you only have yourself to blame now. So, that, <laughs> so that's that's the good news there. <laughs> that's the good news, right? Yeah. right? So it's very sure. simple, sure. very simple. You just yeah. go to the, to the battle.net app, you download the Overwatch World Cup viewer, you observe the games. If you aren't doing it right now, well, go do it. Yeah, but, okay. but tune into the halftime break. Tune into the halftime break. Yeah, please money. do. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Tune into the halftime the numbers. because Reinforce <laughs> gets more money. That is exactly why you need to tune into the half here. All right, well... <laughs> <laughs> Just what is going on here? Who knows? I, 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 I've <laughs> given up. I've given up. All right. You know, ZP, Jake, I'm going to let you guys take it from here because I think that now I am putting in my official resignation. How do we take it from here? Where do you go from that? I don't know where you go from that. You guys are having way too much fun, but you know what? So are we here, Jake. <laughs> We're going to see if Australia can break this back in a reverse sweep and give any form of order to the chaos. Uh, can Bren live up to his calling as the greatest analyst of all time? Will he be wearing the dunce hat? These are the real questions that we need answered here, Jake. You know, I, as much as I'd love to be optimistic, I'd love to be excited, build up that hype. I have to say, I feel like as much as this is a map that Team Australia is going to be really dominant, on. It's also a map that Team South Korea is going to be incredibly experienced on. We've seen a ton of gameplay on this map in the Overwatch League, and it's such a map about precision, about perfection. It's about making no mistakes on the offense so that you keep all of your teammates alive. And that kind of level of play is something that I think should play to South Korea's strengths. It's going to be up to Australia to continue to prove that this is their map, that they are truly dominant against some of the best players in the world. And as we've said multiple times, the stakes are couldn't they really couldn't be higher, right? This has to be the beginning of a comeback. You know, Team South Korea, they're, they're playing with the house money right now. They're not scared. If they lose Anubis, no problem. Go to Escort, lose Escort. You go to Australia's worst map type. So Team Australia, if they win this, that takes some real mental fortitude. I'm going to tell you, though, I, I do think South Korea should be scared. Here's why. We know that just looking at the desk that Brent is willing to cross some lines. He's willing to go to some extremes. And if we don't have an old school Tanya Harding situation, I'm going to be shocked. I'm going to be shocked, Jake. <laughs> you never know what to expect with the Brenji, you know. Sometimes uh, <laughs> he takes it a little seriously. Sometimes it's getting a little serious. Looks like uh, Cust is also taking it a little bit seriously here. Coming out on the Torbjorn, maybe looking to flex it out again. Using the TP, getting to the high ground, going to set up this castle, this time on the Anubis high ground. It worked really well on Blizzard World first. In fact, a lot better than I would have expected. This time they have Huss's Widowmaker to deny Fleta's Farah, which is sort of what, inevitably, what ended up breaking up in um, the defense last time. So South Korea needs a new solution to this and it might just be Genji Sombra die. And I think at this point, the surprise of the Torbjorn has probably gone away where they weren't expecting a Blizzard World. They go, hey guys, are they running that? Are they running that again? Oh, yeah, yeah, they are. I can't help but wonder if this is a response to practicing with Kuzdan 300 ping on Australian <laughs> servers, but... Um, the turret doesn't miss. The turret does not care about your ping. Yeah, the turret is a very, very accurate ally to have. Fury getting stunned in the back line. I don't know if he's able to escape from this. So much pressure on him. He's taking a ton of damage. Excuse me, sorry. That's Punk taking a ton of damage. He's able to escape. 
Australia needs to back up a little bit, get healed up. A Kraken is actually in the danger zone right now. Is finally going to get healed back up. Australia back to the spot, but Hus, Dovon, Fleta just got right up and in there. The Widow threat, it's gone. The Torn threat, still there, but okay, you've lost the turret. South Korea is just picking this apart. And the idea of a first point hold here, as was kind of suggested on the desk, probably not going to happen as South Korea is dominating this first point. Exactly what I expect out of the Torbjorn defense. It doesn't really work that well. <laughs> but um, in this case, it seems like Blood is just free. I mean, with the junk bed, at least the Genji can be a little oh, bit scared. Oh, 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 that oh. insane headshot with a Nano Corp! Never Nano Corp! Take back all of your just filthy words, Jake, because Custa has brought this back a Tor. You don't know the true power of the dark side. There is no luck at all associated with one shotting a Genji in the middle of his dash just on Torbjorn. Nothing, no luck at all. Fleta. Making a big mistake there, I guess. Also, if you like lava, let me tell you, a volcano is about to erupt. It's Mount Custa, Molten Core, on deck. What are you gonna do right now? He goes, you know, I mean, he used it. I'm just gonna play in some damage in the face. Now, here we go, the Molten Core, lava everywhere. Has it done anything yet? No, but we're eternally hopeful as South Korea still goes in, they deal with us, but they are giving this a lot of respect, Jake. Yeah, but picks coming in for Team South Korea. Australia, they need to respond in a more striking fashion. It feels like this back point setup is not going to work so well once they start losing players. Although Punk's able to make it back to his team. That's so important here. Carpe's EMP has to be really huge here. There's no nano boost to enable Fleta. So really, it's on South, the rest of Team South Korea to keep Fleta alive, keep the pressure on Australia so that they can't shut down the blade. Carpe going to be a big part here. Immediately drops EMP. Dive comes in. Immediately Fleta right in there. And the blade strikes true. It's safe. It takes down two immediately, and fun and games might be over now for Australia, where South Korea goes, all right, you kept us off our guard for a little bit here, but now, really, we're going to be taking this point. Yeah, it took a while, took a little bit of an old bank setup, uh, but finally, Australia is cracked, and they're going to be forced to switch a lot of their team composition right now, losing four of their major ultimates just to get back into a composition that makes sense for second point. This is a major risk of running the Torbjorn comp. You're forced to make massive swaps later into the round that lose all of the tempo that you previously gained, so South Korea have a real chance to take this first fight. The problem here, though, is that South Korea has also gone for a whole bunch of swaps and deciding, oh, you guys are going to be broke on ultimates. You know what? That sounds good. Everyone has no money, or in this case, money being ult. So it is more of a reset for both sides. Oh, wait, we got more swaps. We're not done yet. I thought Custom was actually going to bring the Torb out there. I was a full <laughs> believer at that point. But going on that Zenyatta over the Nano Boost onto the Hammond doesn't really find any connections, though. South Korea understands how impossible it is to fight the Nano Boosted Hammond. They're immediately retreating, want to regroup, but Trill's going back in for more. Trill, you know what? He has been in the South Korea back line this entire time. He has been fearsome, whether it be on Winston or the Hammond. And look, Nano Boost is something you got to respect. Exactly. Very difficult to break. But Team South Korea, they're playing this slow. It's all about the ultimate game at this point. Australia has managed to get over their hump and start building up those ultimates, as you mentioned. A Kraken getting pressure back into the spawn, but now it's Jonak oh. doing the dive. But he's still alive, protected by his supports. Meanwhile, Custa able to punish Fate, so it's not quite the engage that South Korea would have liked. They're down to five. Australia's a little bit chunked down, but ooh, Trill pile driving on the Jonak again. Trill, at this point, I'm convinced that Jonak owes Trill money. Trill definitely is coming for him, whether it's Ode or not. Carpe <laughs> getting a lot of damage there, starting to build up his Graviton Surge. But this is this comp's looking a little bit weird for Team South Korea. I mean, normally you would expect a Reinhardt in this composition so that you can maximize the power of your Zarya, force the enemies to shoot those shields. But Fates Winston's going to have a tough time to actually find pickups here. He's going to be all alone if he extends off into the back line. And if he plays on point, he's not going to be cleaving as effectively as a Ryan would. So it's up to Fate to, shoot, to prove that this Primal is actually worth it. We'll see how this goes. Australia, of course, in a good advantage here for EMP. Here's the problem. On Anubis, you all clump up because you think it's a good idea, but you know what a Sombra wants to do? Sombra just wants to hit all that with one juicy EMP. And instead, they use it on two. They use it to immediately get rid of Carpe, and then they just go after Fate. So you didn't even go for everyone. They just went for the quick pickoff, and it works out quite well. And South Korea's barrier, it's not enough to actually swing the fight. Yeah, very hard to come back on Temple of Anubis once you lose a few on offense. Of course, those defensive spawns are just so close to the fight, it's just very difficult to overwhelm them. 
At this point, Fury d mac with very low charge. They're going to let him leave, and it's, this is just a major, major delay for Team South Korea. They don't really seem to have an answer with this. This Winston triple tank composition is really not getting it done for them, it seems. Well, the one upside here for South Korea is that they are about to have grab up and right. I mean, Australia, though, they have so many tools that this is still going to be a very difficult fight for South Korea. They're spending the time to group back up. They know they don't have to worry about the MP, so now they're going to go in. Rowley's up, they're armored up, but here comes the mine. No Trill dives in, drops the mine. CKM off the Meteor Strike, finds Fury, denies the rematch, and that is enough. You pick up one or two people, you win the fight, and Australia will fend South Korea off again. I will say though, Team South Korea did, are, are, they're in a better position in the ultimate economy now than they were before that last fight. So they are making a bit of progress here, starting to work down those ultimates. It costs four for Australia to make that hold. And South Korea have managed to hold on to their Graviton Surge and their Primal Rage. This is the type of team fight that you can definitely win. But again, Hus has that EMP. If you only have one ultimate, there's not a better one in the game than the EMP. EMP is the one ult that doesn't really care about how many ults the other team has. You can win a fight with a good oh. EMP. Oh, gets grabbed! Right, he's going for the EMP. Doesn't get anything he wants at all. Three early pickoffs from South Korea. What a read coming in from Carpe. 